In this last section, we're going to discuss cardinality. And cardinality is a really great way to end sets because we've always discussed the elements in a set. We haven't discussed the number of elements in a set. So the number of elements in a set just means you're counting how many, well, how many elements, how many colors do I have here? Four. Okay, that's the cardinality. So there's a difference between listing elements and then finding the number of elements in that set. So cardinality, it's very careful we see this, cardinality is the number of elements in a set, okay, which let's note here that the previous sections, 3, 1 to 3, 3, list elements. Okay, we're just listing the elements. We don't know how many, right? But cardinality tells us uh, uh, how many. So if the number of elements we denote here as n is the cardinality, then the cardinality of a set is going to be notated as the n of a, the number of elements in set a. Whereas here, um, this is a different notation that we can use because it's the number of elements, so it's always positive, and that's why they put the little absolute value bars. But in this class, in these notes, we're going to go ahead and just use n for the number because I feel like the number of elements, if you see that n there, you know that the answer is a number. Versus before, if it doesn't have the N in front of the set, then you're looking to list elements. So that's really key in the difference between 3, 1 to 3, 3 and 3, 4. So let's look how Venn diagrams kind of, you know, blend in with um, cardinality. In this example, we survey 200 people and ask, what beverage do you drink in the morning? And they offers the choices tea only, coffee only, or both coffee and tea. So if we report that 20 like tea only, 80 report coffee only, 40 report both, how many people drink tea in the morning? How many people drink neither tea nor coffee? So there's two questions here. The first thing I would do is draw a Venn diagram. Okay, where one set is there people who drink tea and the other set are the people who drink coffee and out here in the universal set, well, maybe they don't drink coffee or tea. Maybe they have orange juice or a protein shake, right? So call this coffee and this tea. If we know that tea report I'm sorry, 20 report tea only, 80 report coffee only, and 40 report both coffee and tea. We do know that 200 people were surveyed. So there are people here in this, outside of these two sets of coffee and tea, right? That they drink orange juice or protein shake, whatever. Okay, so here, the first question was, how many people drink tea only? I mean tea. Okay, well now let's look at the set. Drinking tea, not tea only, because we already know that, that's 20, but there are people who drink tea and coffee, right? So not only do you get the people who only are committed to tea only, but you get the people who drink both. So if you look at the tea circle, I'll circle it. Notice that this intersection here of tea and coffee and tea only are the entire group that drink some sort of tea in the morning. So the number of people that drink tea is going to be the people that drink coffee and tea, right? Because they have tea plus tea only, which is 60. Okay, the second part is finding the number of people that drink neither coffee nor tea. 
Well, if they're not drinking coffee or tea, then that means they're drinking something else like orange juice and protein shake. And in fact, it's going to be somewhere out here in the universal set, right? So it's going to be every, everything but in this sets of coffee and tea. So essentially what you're finding, and in our head, we're finding the number of people in the complement of the union, right? Because if you think about it, here's the union, and I'm looking for the people that are out here that are not in the union. So just looking at pic the picture itself and kind of combining all the concepts we have, that's really what we're doing. We're finding that complement of the union and the number of people in that. Well, it doesn't have to be really that complicated. So for example, if we just want the number of people that drink neither, well, really, all we have to do is say, well, 200 people were asked, and these many people drink coffee and tea, so all we have to do is take 200 and subtract these. And I would be like, you're absolutely right. So neither would be the total number of people surveyed minus 80, minus 40, and then minus the tea drinkers. So that would be um, 200 minus 80, which is 120, minus 40 is 80, 80 minus 20 is 60. So out here is 60. So 60 drink neither coffee nor tea. And that just means they have like orange juice or a protein shake or something like that. But this idea of finding, notice that we were adding two numbers here to get the set. Notice for the number in the complement, we took the total number in the universal set and subtracted that union. So these are generic formulas that we have when doing cardinality. So the first property is the number of elements in the union would just be the sum of the two um, number of elements in each set and then subtract the overlap, the intersection, right? So up here we see 40 people are in both, see coffee and tea. So in the union, we would add all these up, but then t we can't double dip. So we have to subtract that last 40. So we can't say, oh, 120 is here and 60 is here because then you're taking those intersections twice, right? So we have to, we can't double dip. So you just add the elements up and subtract the intersection once so that way you're not double dipping. The complement is exactly what we did here. You just take the total number in your universe set and subtract however many elements in that set. But notice with little arithmetic, we can move this around Right? We, move, we can always move the union on the right and the intersection on the left and get this property. So as long as we know three of the four parameters, oh, we can always find the other one, right? So we, if, as long as we know enough, we can apply these cardinal property, cardinality properties.